Yo, 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 what is up my gladiator? Sam here, and as promised, I'm going to do a Q&A video now that we've kind of wrapped up the first season of the Yandere High School series, and that story arc has kind of been concluded. And uh, yeah, so what I've decided to do is I've gone through and I picked out a bunch of different questions, and I'm gonna uh, go through them now, and we can answer some of them for you guys. I've never really done too much of a Q&A thing. I haven't done too many of these personal type videos and I feel like a lot of my channel is just like you know the let's plays and the role plays and stuff and we haven't had much of this kind of one-on-one -on -one talk and I think that'd be a lot of fun to do just kind of uh, give you guys a chance to kind of get to know me and uh, give me a chance to kind of get to know you guys so this is a fun way for me to interact with the community okay so the first question uh, it says where do you come up with this crazy stuff so I'm Guessing you guys are kind of interested how I come up with the ideas for some of the role plays and the storylines and the characters and stuff. Um, a lot of it is I, I, I sit by the fireplace uh, at my house and um, I'll have a little notepad and I'll draw out the map and I'll just kind of sit there and think for like hours and I'll just kind of like draw out little I mean I've got like a whole book and I would just draw out little um pathways like where we would go what would happen in that area and then write little notes even like in school and stuff um I would be doing the same thing when we're all supposed to be taking notes for class and and, and for the uh, test I would just be drawing out what my role plays would look like and taking little notes like this is where we're going to meet this character and so and so and this will happen and then if you just go through all my notes it's just role play stuff and it's like um, I probably should have been studying but hey I really wanted to make these videos so um, a lot of it comes from a lot of it comes from my dreams I have very vivid dreams and a lot of it from my own experiences um, I did stay in Tokyo for uh, uh, a little while and that's kind of the inspiration and where the whole Yandere high school uh, story kind of took place is I wanted to kind of revisit the things I would go out and do on my own while I was in Tokyo and I kind of felt like it'd be cool to create a story around that and then put it in Minecraft. And then I was able to find that map and I was like, oh, cool. I'm going to kind of start piecing to, together some cool ideas and stuff. And so it kind of comes from my dreams, my own experiences, and then a lot of research. I research like crazy. Every night I'm spending hours researching uh, all kinds of things. I'll watch shows, movies, and I'll even like um, look into literary works, uh, writers that I really enjoy and stuff, and kind of pick up themes and story arcs from all over the place so it's all about storytelling and you know watching movies and just getting lots and lots of inspiration so hopefully that answers that question next question who is your favorite youtuber this is an interesting question because i do not watch too many youtubers most of my television like most of my entertainment comes from watching uh cartoon shows or movies and stuff like that, which I've already kind of previously touched on. But I would say one of my favorite YouTubers might be Markiplier. I did get to meet him once when I was a very, very small YouTuber. I think I only had like 10K subs at the time. And, uh, and I, I, I got to talk with him for a brief moment. He did. He had no idea who, he, who I was. And I just thought he, was, he seemed like a really cool guy. Um, I didn't get to know him too well. And then um, watching his videos after that, he seems like a really genuine YouTuber. He seems like a very genuine person. So I really like Markiplier. I watch some of his stuff. I think he's pretty respectable. Uh, I think he's a pretty good YouTuber. Um, next question this is by the same person. What's your top three favorite movies? And I like movies very, very much. So this is gonna be a fantastic question for me. My number one movie would be Seven Samurai by Akira Kurosawa. I actually have a poster of it. Maybe I could show you guys really quick. I don't know if this, you see? There's like a poster of it. Let me look at the camera. Right there, right there on my wall. I got a massive poster. I love that movie. It's from like the 19, 50s I believe it's quite old black and white film I don't think a lot of people will like it but it's one of my favorites just trying to get the camera working again it's one of my favorites and it's really stuck with me I mean I've watched this film 
so many times. It's ridiculous. I have it like on the special edition DVD box set kind of deal. And yeah, I love that movie. Um, my second one. Hmm, I have so many favorites. Oh, I don't know if I can choose three. I think I'm going to have to like do five or ten or something like that. So I'm just going to list it and not in a particular order, but I do love um, Sergio Leone's uh, uh, the Man with No Name series, which is Clint Eastwood. So this is a fistful of dollars for a few dollars more, and the good, the bad, and the ugly. Those are movies are amazing, and they're actually inspired by Akira Kurosawa's work. So it's kind of like a combination of of all the stuff I enjoy, and then the like directors and writers kind of you know mixing their stories together. So that would be up there. I also like the movie Gladiator. As a kid, I loved that movie. As you can tell my name is Sam Gladiator. Where'd the Gladiator come from? Well, the movie Gladiator. I have a movie buff. I love that movie. That's that's a fun one. Um, I do like the Hayao Miyazaki films, like Spirited Away. Obviously, I have like references it. I references to it in my banner. Um, Ponyo is a really fun one. My Neighbor Totoro is really great. A lot of those films. So I'd say those are like my my top three like directors maybe, and then all of their films are, are quite fantastic. So next question, what is your favorite part of making Yandere High? Well, I think the actual uh, um, the actual filming of it, right? Like sitting down and actually being in that moment that I've kind of created with all of the preparation and work that goes behind. I mean, it takes hours and hours and hours of preparation. And then that moment where all that work then comes together and you start filming because then you go through this huge cohesive story that's already set out that I've already planned and then you can kind of feel things unfold and it feels pretty real and then you're able to give very real um, reactions to it. And I think that's a lot of fun. So the actual act of filming it and being in that moment and creating those, those little moments um, is really, really cool because you don't know 100% what's going to happen. And I mean, I planned out the story. It's all scripted, but little things can be added in there and seeing it come to fruition or whatever is really really fun for me um what inspired you to do the yandere series also my sister uh or was wondering how did you meet tortoise so what inspired me to do the yandere series i think i talked about that a little bit um living in tokyo for a very short amount of time going out on my own i would i would wake up every morning i mean i did some vlogs if you want to look on my channel i actually did vlogs while i was in tokyo but um going out on my own every morning and i would just kind of walk around the city it was a very interesting and cool experience because um you know obviously people there don't speak english so i was kind of like in my own little bubble in my own little world and i could just go out and do things and i just felt it was a very strange like disconnect that i felt and i was very very uh, secluded. I even like my phone didn't even work. I was lost at some time. So I would just kind of go out in a foreign country with actually with no like connection to anyone else and just kind of do my own thing. And that was a very cool experience and feeling. I never felt anything like that just being so disconnected and in my own world that I kind of was inspired to create a, a story around that and I would go out and I would do things I'd go to the park by myself and and that was that was a very very fun time for me um how did I meet tortoise that's the second question he well he was a fan of mine um back in the day I would make machinimas and he was kind of like a fan ish I can't really remember too much and I think he wanted to body act or something for a video of mine that I was doing really that was years and years ago and um I just try to fix my hair and then he started gaining some subscribers he started doing some machinimas and stuff and then him and i just kind of hit it off he was just a really cool guy i'm like oh dude i love your work he liked my stuff and we just kind of became friends after that and now we hang out like every single day we watch tv shows together we watch we play games him and i are both like uh, well he's plat in league i'm gold and we will we'll duo and ranked all the time yeah, him and I were pretty much best friends. Um, what made you do a bunny skin? The bunny hat. What is up with this? 
There's a what? What is this? What? What does this mean? There's a lot of there's a lot of interesting things to the whole bunny hat dealio. Um, it started out with me. Let me just check the time. It's only been ten minutes. It started out with me. Um, doing a Easter machinima, and this was a very very long time ago. I did an Easter machinima. I thought it was hilarious. I played a penny, or I played a character named Penny. He would talk kind of like this. He kind of had like a southernish accent. He was kind of slow, and um, he was a really hilarious character. I put him in a bunny outfit for the Easter special, and that just kind of stuck. I thought it looked absolutely hilarious. So then I kind of created this trend of creating the, the, the whole onesie with the animal uh, outfit. And then everyone kind of started doing that trend with their Minecraft skins. I'm like, that was my thing. And then everyone started kind of doing it. So then I kind of like chopped it up and then just made it purely the hat. And the whole idea was it was originally pink because that was like for the Easter thing. But I made it white and I turned it just into the hat because it kind of symbolized... Um, if you've ever seen the movie, you probably have Alice in Wonderland. And I kind of liked the idea of following the white rabbit, right? So I'm the character whom you follow in my videos. And it's kind of a metaphor for following the, right, the white rabbit down the rabbit hole. And when you follow this character, metaphorically, you're not sure where you're going to end up. You don't, you're not sure where you're going down this rabbit hole. And I think that's kind of like a metaphor for my channel and when people are watching me the you're following the white rabbit and you, we're not sure where we're going to end up and it's kind of like that cool little quirky thing that i like to reference to movies i like to have a lot of undertones and references to mythology and movies that, that i add in, in everything if you look at my banner it's just filled with symbolism and stuff that i won't tell i won't tell anyone but um, yeah, it's just stuff that means a lot to me, and I like to just kind of sprinkle things like that um, in, in everything that I do, so in all my work and stuff. Um, what is your top three TV shows? My top three TV shows. This is a cool question. Hmm. Well, I recently started re-watching Over the Garden Wall. That is like probably one of the greatest cartoon shows I've ever seen. It's amazing. I love Over the Garden Wall so much. Um, I do like the anime Tokyo Ghoul. That's a pretty cool one. And my third one, I don't watch, One Punch Man. One Punch Man, I mean, it just came out, but that show is hilarious. If you guys wanted just a hilarious show, watch One Punch Man, I guarantee you're gonna love it. That would probably be my third favorite show. Uh, Will your next series be called Season 2 Yandere High School? Um, no. I don't want to just keep the same name because it isn't going to be about Yandere and all that stuff. It will have a school, but it's not going to be revolved around school too much. I mean, it kind of will. But I want to create my own story. Um, I don't want to uh, be attached to previous stories that I've done. So it, I don't think I'm going to keep the name. It's going to be a different name, a different story. With similar characters, Tortoise and Grian will definitely be there. So no, not not Yandere. Staying away from that from the name. I don't want to be. Uh, I don't want to get too attached to branding myself under one thing. I don't want people to know me for Sam. He's more known for Yandere, and then just like that's it. I want to be known for me, and I want to be known for my work, and I want to keep one-upping it, right? I'm going to keep getting better and better and better to the point where I'm just known for me. I'm not known for something that I did, if that makes sense. Are we going to be able to download the Yandere High School map and resource pack? Sadly, no. You will not be able to download that stuff. Um, the reason is a lot of people try to remake or copy my work they'll go and they'll kind of remake my videos they'll copy my jokes that obviously is a little frustrating for me i make something really cool a lot of people just go oh that does well i'm gonna remake it and make and get a lot of views and just by putting my brand they kind of get views so obviously i don't like that people do that and if i release my maps and my resource packs and everything that we've made then people are going to copy it even more. Just imagine how bad that would be for me, uh, particularly. Because if I released all my maps and stuff, people would obviously then take that and make videos on my maps, right? 
and then just remake everything that I've done. And that would just be no, 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 no. So everything I do, I like to make it custom. I like to make it very secretive so that no one can really copy it because that really sucks. Like if you've ever like done a drawing and then someone like drew, like does the same drawing and then says that they made it and you're just like, what? That's mine. Why are you doing this? That That's obviously frustrating. So I will never release my maps. I'm really sorry. The, the rotten few kind of ruin it for everyone else who would just want to enjoy it. But I can't because it would, it would probably really mess up my channel. Um, why the do why? Why the dongle, Sam? Why the dongle? That's a good question, dongle. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Um, if you guys don't know, I'm not telling you because inside joke. <laughs> okay. How is it to have a big community? This is an interesting question. Hmm. It's very strange. It's very surreal having a lot of people commenting and having opinions on the things that you do. I'm not used to that. I mean, I went for years only having like maybe 20 comments on a video. Now sometimes I could get 20,000. The video, the last video has like 20,000 comments. That's insane. It's, it's weird. It's weird having a big community. <laughs> it's fun though. Um... How do you record episodes? You have, uh, uh, do you have to script for everything or just do it random? Oh, it's not random. It may feel random, but it ain't random. I mean, the story is perfectly planned out from beginning, middle to end. I mean, from the beginning, I knew what the ending would be and it's all scripted. All the lines that the characters say, that's all been planned out. There is room, there's a little leeway in there for some uh, what's, what's it called? Improv, where we'll improv a little bit of it, but for the most part, it's all planned out. Every scene is definitely planned out. Everything that's going to happen in, in order has been perfectly planned out. And that takes four to five hours before the recording starts to just sit there directing, choreographing, and planning. That takes forever. <laughs> it's crazy amount of work. People don't know how hard it is to make this. It's not random. I don't just sit down and go boop, 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 boop. Oh, look, a video. I wish it were that easy. Um, give us a hint about your new series uh, that you will do. Well, hmm. I'm still thinking about a lot of stuff. I got a lot of stuff cooking in my brain. But I want it to be Slice of Life, obviously. But I also want it to have adventure. And I want to have it a little bit more kooky and crazy with some more outlandish characters. Because with the whole like Christmas episode in the Christmas series, it was really, really fun to have that big snowman. He's like, oh, I won't eat people and stuff. And I want to have really crazy outlandish characters like that. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Just have ridiculous characters. Anyways, I think that's what we're going to we're gonna end on. We're going to end the uh, episode there, the Q&A there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If so, please hit up with a like. And if you guys would like me to do more stuff like this in the future, leave a comment down below with some questions. Actually, I'd like you to tweet me questions. I gotta get some followers on Twitter. I almost have a million subscribers, but I only have like like 24k followers on Twitter. So go to Twitter. I'm gonna plug myself there. Go to Twitter, follow me. I tweet fan art all the time. If you guys want to see artwork, and, and people will even do like storyboards or, or little uh, comic books. If you guys want to see comic books, fan art, and questions and stuff, I mean, there's a lot of really cool stuff on my Twitter. So we're going to end it there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll see you later.